Well, good evening. This is Hound Dog Steve coming to you on the 1st of January. And we certainly didn't have to wait too long to get into the new year to see some developments in France. So, just to put this into a little bit of context, uh, this is the ongoing story of the Yellow Vest protests in France that started last November and uh, over the gasoline tax, the carbon tax. And uh, although it seems to have been a trigger uh, for the protests, there certainly now seems to be more and more reasons why uh, the French people and people around the world are angry at their elitist leaders, their globalist leaders. So uh, Macron is uh, probably doing the best job that he possibly can to get himself ousted as President of France and he's doing a very convincing act of the Emperor who has no clothes. And in his New Year's Eve speech, uh, you know, he came out and basically called the... Um, now he didn't refer to the yellow vest uh, directly, but he uh, basically said uh, elements within the group uh, were violent and were a real problem and that we weren't going to put up with that kind of thing. So Macron is doubling down and insulting the public and seems to be unable, as many of his cohorts are, to grasp the grassroots nature of these protests. It's kind of interesting because I was wondering why, you know, we're seeing actually both the left and the right come together and to oppose the government with the Yellow Vest protests. And this is because uh, the populism that you're seeing is not the traditional kind of populism that you saw rising up in uh, the 1930s. Uh, this is more like the populist uprising that uh, was in the 1830s. Okay? This is from the people. This is about the people. This is about the rights of the people. This is about the people participating in the process. And uh, again, you're seeing this division uh, in America. You know, you have the populist right, which is Trump, and you have the populist left, which is Bernie Sanders. And in the middle there, uh, Clinton is the elitist group, and they are the people who are being tossed out by both sides. So we're seeing a very interesting situation develop here, and uh, who knows how these ideologies will get along together, but certainly they seem to have a common goal right now, which is getting rid of the elite class. Anyway, uh, let's go and take a look at some of these articles that I've dug up, and you will see that this is not going away any time soon. So let's take a little look at those, shall we? Okay, here we go. Uh, we didn't resign ourselves. Macron vows to learn from yellow vest protests in the new year. In battle, Emmanuel Macron has branded anti-government protesters violent, racist, hate-filled liars who do not speak on behalf of the people. Well, I'll take that as a compliment, will I? Uh, the French president is trying desperately to control the protests which have paralyzed parts of France since erupting last month with demonstrators clashing with police, torching cars, erecting roadblocks and burning barricades. Mr. Macron used his traditional New Year's Eve address to acknowledge the anger among so-called Yellow Vest protests, but warned that hateful speech and actions would not be tolerated and denouncing extremist elements within the movement. There you go, New Year's Eve. Speaking from the Elysee Palace, oh dear me, uh, there's no sense of entitlement there, is there, Mr. Macron? Uh, said he would use the anger as a lesson for the coming year. He said an anger that came from far away broke out. Anger against injustices, against the course of globalization, sometimes incomprehensible. Anger against an administrative system that has become too complex and lacking in benevolence. You know, it's almost like there's, the, there's two people, you know, you sort of get schizophrenia because, you know, there they go. They've summed up exactly what the problem is. However, he calls the protesters thugs and that they have no right to protest, basically, against the very things that he has listed there. I mean, it's absolutely staggering. To me, this anger means one thing. Whatever its excesses, we didn't resign ourselves. Oh, yeah, well, you did resign yourself because you've only just done something now when the protests have broken out. Isn't that funny? You, you know, you weren't going to do anything before this. In fact, you were throwing taxes at pensioners and putting carbon taxes on before as if everyone could just afford to pay and um, even though they couldn't afford to buy bread, well, I guess there's always cake and carbon, right? 
The protest named after the yellow high visibility jackets French motorists must carry in their vehicle have transformed from dissent over rising petrol prices and eco taxes into a broader demonstration against Mr. Macron's administration and growing tensions between the metropolitan elite and the rural poor. Without naming the yellow vest protest directly, the president launched a broadside against extreme and violent parts of the movement who claimed to speak on behalf of the people, but were actually speaking for a hateful crowd to attack officials, the police, journalists, Jews, foreigners and homosexuals. He described the violent troublemakers as the negation of France. And if that wasn't enough, EU civil war. Macron future under threat as Italy leader prepares for bloody combat. Now, I'm sure this is just rhetoric, but still. Uh, French President Emmanuel Macron and Italy's populist leader Matteo Salvini are gearing for a showdown at the European Parliament election to be held in May 2019, which could cost centrist forces their leading role in Brussels. The two European leaders have become the symbols of the two sides facing off at the upcoming vote with a French official warning Italy the Elysee is in a logic of combat. While neither Eurosceptic Mr Salvini nor Europhile Mr Macron will be standing for a seat, they embody the two opposite visions for a future European Union arisen in the past years. But this showdown could cost Mr Macron dearly, as populist forces surge in Europe whilst his popularity has sunk to record lows during the past weeks according to the latest surveys. Mr Salvini's far-right party, Lega, looks set to become the most powerful contingent in any nationalist group in Europe. This force will likely team up with MEPs from Marine Le Pen's The National Rally and Viktor Orban's Fidesz Party, also expected to gain votes. This growth will push centrist forces which have historically led the European Parliament aside. Mr Macron's La République En Marche party will end up the second among the French forces in Brussels. The Lega leader's words help shaping a new image of Mr Macron in Italy, who has consequently become a source of all evil for many Italians, according to Natalie Tosi, director of the International Affairs Institute in Rome. So there you go, bloody combat with Italy. And again, if that wasn't enough, Eurozone crisis, Euro to be scrapped in 2019 if there isn't drastic reform. The Eurozone must integrate economically or risk breaking up in 2019 if the Euro is to survive as spiralling debts, trade wars across the Atlantic and Brexit turmoil cause chaos for 19 of the 28 EU member states. Desperate times lie ahead for the Eurozone, which is EU member states who use the Euro as their main currency. As economic growth slows, particularly in countries such as Italy, where debt levels are already astronomically high at 2.2 trillion, the Center for Economic and Business Research said in its annual predictions for 2019, internal contradictions would force the Eurozone to integrate economically or risk breaking up. They added it is possible to defer the confrontation for a year or two, but the boil will have to be lanced at some point, since the Italians have clearly reached a point of austerity fatigue. And I might remind you that Italy is the third largest economy in Europe. This is not small potatoes. This is not If Italy goes into some kind of debt spiral, you will see a very, very serious economic problem in Europe and that will just exacerbate things and as it says they have austerity fatigue austerity fatigue austerity is uh, hard scrabble living let me tell you a Brexit turmoil both inside and outside of the Eurozone is likely to cut growth for the region in 2019 according to a Financial Times poll of economists a total of 23 out of the 24 respondents surveyed in mid-December said they expected growth to be between 1 and 1.8 percent. I mean, that, that, that's not too bad, but um, 1 percent and below, you're looking at uh, anemic. Uh, growth is set to be sluggish compared to 2018, if the forecasts are correct, as the European Central Bank estimated growth to have been around 1.9 percent. Uh, I keep wondering to myself why, in the face of all of this resistance, these leaders still sort of walk around 
uh, like they've got diamonds on the soles of the shoes to uh, quote a song by Paul Simon and uh, you know champagne glass in one hand and uh, whining about rights and this kind of stuff in the other and uh, as they saw with one of those clips there you know Macron truly thinks he is fighting for democracy and he clearly doesn't understand that the meaning of the word has changed or maybe he is just wants to perpetuate that new meaning to us to have us believe to convince us that democracy is the same thing that we have assumed it to be all along and it's only now and of course this is interesting this is where the economics of the whole situation uh, comes into this is that it's only now that under the squeezing pressure of inflation that we're starting to see the cracks and flaws in the globalist system and it didn't take very long for it to open up and start bleeding all over the place did it uh, as I said, you know, uh, all of these globalists are basically asking you to hand off complete control and all decision making to the bureaucracy and take a look around you. Take a good hard look around you. All of the things that are really great about today's world in which we live in basically were invented or pioneered uh, in the first half of the last century. Okay, we've had a set of leaders in, basically since then, who have ridden on the coattails of their parents, the people who built the bridges, built the roads, built the infrastructure, and managed the whole process. And now that those coattails are starting to wear a little thin and get a little shabby, and the infrastructure is falling apart, and uh, inflation is catching up with everybody, as I said, it is pretty clear that these people absolutely have no idea of what is going on. They've been in such a collective bubble uh, that they have not had to pay for their mistakes, so they've never learned. You have to make mistakes and feel the pain of those mistakes to learn lessons in life so you don't repeat those mistakes. Well, these people have basically been insulated from that, and so they have pushed the envelope to the absolute extreme. And now we're seeing the result, and that is boots on the street. And I wonder how much longer I'm going to see this situation repeated where there are people on the street basically with stones and scars across their faces uh, coming up against the jack-booted thugs that become this militarized police force that we never used to have in, in, in these countries. We never needed stuff like that. It's abs in fact, it's shameful the way the government is putting up this black wall of death against its own citizens. Anyway, we will continue reporting into 2019 and uh, please, if you have enjoyed this video, uh, like and subscribe below. Uh, thank you to all my new subscribers that are joining me and to those who are returning to see events unfolding around the world. Okay, so this is Hound Dog Steve signing off. I hope you have a great evening and we will talk real soon. You take care now. See ya. Bye now.